Welcome to That Other Monday Show. I'm your host, Steve Hofmeyer. <clears throat> Children are like wet cement. Whatever falls on them makes an impression. And if we look at some of Zuma's children, chances are he's been stumbling all over the wet cement that is their upbringing. At least some of them still need to grow up and can possibly save themselves from the legacy that has been so humbly bestowed upon them. So, let's have a quick look at the status of number one's tribal fuckery. Kulwani Monkoba Zuma is one of the youngest kids. Monkoba means believe it in Zulu. Yes, like Zuma's believe it or not, he is only one of 22 children. And not all of these children were born to the legally married wives, legally, <laughs> of our prayers. Uh, most kids come from the wives we know of, while several other loves fill out the list. Like Jabulile, from a woman in Richards Bay, and two daughters with Priscilla Mklongu, uh, a businesswoman from Peter Maritzburg. At some point, Zuma even managed to stick his dick <laughs> into Irvin Causa's daughter. And nine months later, Tandikile Zuma was born. For those of you who don't know who Irvin is, uh, he is the chairman of Orlando Pirates, chairman of the South African Premier Soccer League, and by virtue of this, vice president of the South African Football Association. La du Uh, there are another three children, a girl, Bridget, and a set of seemingly nameless twins from a mysterious so-called colored woman from Johannesburg. Speaking of twins, there is also a second set of twins, Dudizane and Dudizile. Dudizane, or Zane, like his father, likes money. A lot. Back in 2009, while on the world's largest passenger ship, the Oasis on the Seas, uh, uh, he stayed in a suite costing between 150,000 Rand and 250,000 Rand per week. And guess who was on board with him? One of Daddy's former BFFs, Julius Malema. Dudazani was surrounded by Indian businessmen most of the time. And I wonder who those guys were. I'm on the phone, motherfucker, don't you ever forget? Anyway, uh, Zane lives in a big ass house in the fancy part of Joburg, and he has a shitload of cars. Now that's fair enough. It's technically owned by Mabangela Investments, of which he is a director, uh, along with his boat buddies, the Gupta Brothers. Take a good hard look at the motherfucking boat, yeah. Oh, and in 2014, he slammed his Porsche into the back of a minibus taxi in Santon, killing a woman and injuring three other people. Nice bio so far, bro. Twin sis, Dudizile, hosted a massive birthday party costing over 400,000 Rand. No one knows who paid for it. Um, where copious amounts of Johnny Walker Blue and Dom Perignon uh, were fed to the 500 plus strong guest list. Until this year, she was married to Lonwabo Sambudla, who is linked to 10 day irregularities. I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die from not being surprised. Honestly, Dudizan and Dudizile, it sounds like a. like a SABC1 sort of a kiddie show. Dudazani, Dudazile, the Dudu Show! Yay! Hey, Dudu, what's today's letter? Well, today's letter is the letter C. Oh, C for seahorse? No, C for corruption! Yeah! Mm. <laughs> Moving on through the list, we have daughters Tandisizwe and Sinkobile Zuma, as well as son Sinkumo. Uh, they're still little kids, so we wish them all the luck in the world. Next, there is Saadi Zuma, uh, who has business interests in at least six investment and broker companies. But he stays out of the news as well as social media. We're assuming he is one of the good kids. What, what kind of a name is, is, is a Saadi? Sa Saadi, is it, is it a... It might be Indian? No matter, they're still Afrikaans. Saadi Matamun! Let's do a quick fire round. Daughter, Guguzuma, 
more on the straight and narrow. Known for her acting role as Lissetti Malloy in Isidingo. For more inside, behind the scenes gossip, we switch to Isidingo expat, Farrow Bornman. I'm, I'm not Farrow Bornman, my name is Adele de Vete. That was like four years ago. Nice one, team. Third time lucky. Right person, wrong name. I'm very impressed. I'm someone going to subscribe. Uh, Tuli Zuma, one of the brainy ones who also graduated from the University of KZN with a master's degree in economics. Uh, she also has interest in at least four businesses. Very nice. Pumzile Zuma, she became a Scientologist. Big Will Smith fan. Vusi Zuma, he stays in Cambridge. Massa Massa he lives in America. Um, <laughs> Shalozi Zuma, the one who was named after her father's nickname. Now, not showerhead, just Mshalozi. Uh, funny story, in 2013, she went along with Daddy to an IEC point at a primary school in Kansa and was told she wasn't on the voters' roll because she wasn't born in South Africa. She was born in Swaziland. Daddy made a few phone calls. Everything was sharp, sharp. Now, isn't that a funny story? Isn't that just so funny? And now a word from our sponsors. Don't go away. <laughs> this week's episode is brought to you by Stash Records. If you're too young to know what a CD player is, or too fucking old to know how one works, then make your way on the 5th of December from 10 a.m. to the Good Luck Bar. There's a vinyl fair. All the information is in the information below. Vinyls. They're fucking cool. <laughs> You want to get ahead in life? Study for a simple BA Honours degree. Only a year after obtaining her BA Honours in Anthropology in 2012, daughter Tutu, cock name, uh, was appointed Public Liaison Officer at the Ministry of State Security. Another year later, in 2014, at the tender age of 25, she became the youngest ever Ministerial Chief of Staff in Africa, in the world, in the your fucking universe. Um, with her appointment, in the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services, earning a cool million annually. That's like giving control of Microsoft to the checkout lady in Incredible Connection. You know, it pro provided her, her BEE status. Um, uh, Tutu also has outside business interests. What? What? That's... Um, her Twitter uh, bio reads as follows. Chief of Staff, Telecommunications and Postal Services Department. The President's daughter, born free, previously underprivileged. Under, 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 previously poor. Lastly, we get to the bad apple. Edward Zuma, who in 2000 was arrested for raping a fellow student. The victim withdrew the charges after reportedly receiving compensation. Now, ay, that's like father, like sunburn. Sun burn. Anyways. Um, Edward has since been in the news for defaulting on a multi-million rand loan, owing 20 million rands to his wedding planner, allegedly dealing in illegal cigarettes, and avoiding paying maintenance for his son. Don't worry, Ed. As taxpayers, we've got you covered. He is also supposedly chummies with Toshan Panday, a shady businessman from KZN, something Eddie vehemently denied just last week, although... Panday was one of his wedding guests, you know, at his wedding. Facebook doesn't lie, my friend. Once you're tagged, you're fucked. Panday, on the other hand, uh, had his companies bid against one another to secure police contracts and tenders to give the appearance of a competitive process. Panday's company made a combined 200% profit on all items or services peddled to the police. So... Let's raise a glass to Zuma, right here, here we go, for doing such a sterling job, fathering two soccer teams by fucking a hockey team. Great job, man. Really. Great job. Is that a cut? Okay. Because I'm very white, so is there any way to, like, pronounce these names easier? Can the honorable member speak English like a black man, please?